Just like you, I used to have debilitating leg cramps during the last five to six miles of every marathon I raced. But I haven't had cramps during a marathon since 8.50 a.m. on Sunday, May 28, 2017, six years before the making of this video. And here are the three key ways I've been able to run more than 10 marathons since then without leg cramps. Number one, stay hydrated. I think every single method I describe in this video is absolutely necessary to stave off cramps during a marathon race. However, the biggest and most noticeable game changer for me was when I discovered the no-carb electrolyte LMNT while I was following a ketogenic diet a few years ago. While keto, my legs always felt really tight after about nine miles of sustained running. I did some research and decided to try hydrating with an electrolyte and water mixture rather than just with plain water. It was an amazing difference. Drinking water with no sugar electrolyte gave my legs immediate relief. I could run up to 35 continuous miles with what felt like fresh legs. Hydrating with electrolyte also didn't cause the sloshy stomach that I usually got with plain water or with sugary sports drinks when I wasn't keto. For the marathon, I was able to pace my kids and my friend during their races. Anywhere from nearly four hours with Evan at a pace of 8.47 per mile to three hours and 19 minutes with my buddy John at a pace of 7.34 per mile. For race pace efforts anywhere between 6.35 to 6.50 per mile, I would begin the marathon holding at least 500 milliliters of electrolyte and water. I would drink every two miles from the beginning of the marathon, finishing my bottle by mile 12. And then I would use whatever electrolyte would be on the course for the rest of the race. Holding the bottle from the start allows me to drink often and without zigzagging to aid stations on the course. I was also able to run up to 47 miles in about seven and a half hours fasted with only electrolyte and water for fuel. All of this with no cramping in the legs. LMNT contains 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium, and zero sugar. I've used liquid IV with similar success if you are looking for a hydration solution that includes some sugar. It is most important to avoid plain water so that it doesn't just sit in your stomach while on the run. The electrolytes will help to transport the water into your system, replace the fluid in the blood you lose through sweat, and supply more oxygen to your muscles in order to keep fatigue and cramping from setting in. Number two, increase volume. Before May of 2017, I would average 40 to 50 miles of running per week. For me, that wasn't enough to keep the cramps at bay towards the end of a marathon. Only after I started averaging over 70 miles per week did I feel confident to race aggressively at a pace that I trained for without fear of locking up at mile 21 or 22. But I have to add that it was the combination of electrolyte-based hydration with more daily running volume that really gave me the full confidence to attack a marathon without fear. I couldn't do it with just one or the other. Number three, negative split races. Every one of my marathon PPs have been negative splits, not by huge margin, but by less than two minutes. Trying to bank time certainly led to cramping every time for me, especially soon after the two hour mark during a marathon. Why? Well, for normal people on a regular diet of carbohydrates, after two hours of hard effort or effort close to threshold, glycogen will be depleted from the muscles. And without the glycogen energy source, in addition to glycogen's ability to hold water, the body will begin to fatigue. And fatigue is a major trigger for the neurological response of cramping. Although I have had a lot of success running in ketosis, marathon racing requires one or more gears higher than my fat burning gear. So I stay on a low carb diet most of the time during training, but will carb up for big long run training days and for the marathon race itself. That allows my body to remember my fat burning gear in addition to having a glycogen fuel source ready to burn when I start lighting matches. So in a marathon race, I make sure that the first 40 minutes of a marathon are at a fat burning effort. 
I choose a pace that depends not only on the training, but on the weather on race day, the difficulty of the course, and the level of physical and mental health I am at on the morning of the marathon. And that will get me to around the six mile mark. And if I run hard for the next two hours, deplete my muscles of glycogen, and make it to mile 23 or 24, that will only leave between two to three miles for me to dig deep and go to the well. I feel like I can convince my brain to hold on for another 10 to 20 minutes. If instead, I were to have gone hard from the start and had another full hour or eight to nine miles to go to the finish line, I think I would be defeated by hopelessness and certainly succumb to the fatigue and eventual cramping. But when I'm so close to the finish, I feel like I can wheel myself to the line. So if you plan to finish at around three hours, hold back for the first six miles. And if you plan to finish at around four hours, hold back for the first 12 miles. Hey, thanks so much for making it to the end of this talk on winning against leg cramps. Please share in the comments below if you've had success keeping the cramps away. And please like and subscribe. Have a meaningful run today. I'll see you in the next one. Ooh, looks good.